Hello and welcome everyone. Today we talk about containers, Docker, Podman and Geeks. I am Andrew Tripin, I work on operating systems and programming languages and do a lot of free and open source software along the way. Let's start from a basic question why we need containers at all. They can provide environment isolation, quick deployment and they have low hardware footprint to install. I basically use it for two primary use cases to quickly set up some needed application consisting of a few services uh, and check something on a different distribution or environment. There are much more use cases, of course, but the, those two are my uh, primary. And another question, why not to just use Docker for it? Um, you can think I do it because of security, security simplicity, modularity, uh, consistency and features. But in reality, I just like new and shiny things, and that is why I use Podman. Uh, Podman provides basically all the functionality of the Docker, but it is a bit cleaner implementation and organization structure-wise. So how to set up uh, Podman on a uh, gig system? It's actually quite simple. You just need uh, two things. First one is to set up uh, subunit and subgit uh, files in etc directory and the second one is install uh, podman package and maybe podman compose if you use uh, compose fun functionality and compose files. So how to do it in gigs? It's quite simple. We will be doing it using uh, home and system services. For home services uh, to install podman packages and podman compose packages, I will just extend home profile service type. Also, you can provide an alias uh, for podman and alias it to docker command because the CLI have very similar commands and uh, it will work in most cases. Uh, you just will be using podman as a backend instead of docker, but uh, typing your usual uh, docker ps, docker list, docker pool and so on. To create subunit and su subgit files in the etc directory, we just extend etc uh, service type with two files, subunit and subgit, and with following queries. Username is uh, obtained from my configuration, and uh, here you can see the starting unit and the number of units to allocate. Why we need those files, you can read in the article uh, how does rootless podman work. I will keep the link in the notes and I will share notes under the video, I guess. Okay, after we did uh, all that stuff, we need to reconfigure our system. Uh, and in addition to that, I do, uh, I provide a few more configuration files for Podman itself. They're not necessary, but they will improve uh, our life. First one is registers conf. It consists on uh, of list of registers where you can uh, search for images. So you don't need to provide the full uh, path to the image, including the Docker registry. You just can provide a very short uh, name and it will uh, show you a list of registers where it found this image and uh, will ask you where to fetch it from. The second thing is storage conf. And here I only set only one thing. Uh, I set driver to overlay, uh, so it's a bit more performant than default option. And policy JSON sets the policy uh, related to obtaining uh, images. Uh, here I set insecure accept anything, so I can uh, easily uh, use all the images available. Uh, if you have a very st uh, more strict um, security requirements, you can set uh, arbitrary. Uh, configuration here and restrict uh, usage of some images which are not uh, uh, signed or not came from a particular regist registry. Okay, everything reconfigured. Uh, I have uh, Podman on my system right now and let's uh, test it a bit. Uh, I will start from running a simple command on Alpine image. Alpine image already downloaded, so it's easily executed uh, this stuff here. And uh, to be sure that it's not my system, uh, let's let's take a look at passes of the file. Okay, uh, you don't see my 
username here so it's probably the file from container um, okay what else we can do uh, this is a simple use case uh, where I try some stuff on a different Linux distributions or just in a different environments uh, the second uh, case um, is setting up some application for example I use I have Pisa uh, installed locally here is a, a demo instance it's not my instance uh, but it is application showing uh, a lot of information about your plain text accounting in very uh, nice graphical form and I install it using Podman uh, because I don't want to deal with all the dependencies of, of it and it's much easier for me so uh, another case is to just run some application here I will be running some uh, basic HTTP server for demonstration purpose and I will obtain it from Docker IO registry. And after that, this website on localhost uh, should become available. Right now you can see that uh, it says unable to, unable to connect. And after uh, image downloaded the uh, container container started you can see it here and uh, I can access this image and HTTP server executed inside uh, this container so that's uh, basically it what you need uh, to have uh, to work with Podman on your gig system uh, let's try a couple more comments uh, let's see what uh, what the processes inside our uh, last used container and let's stop this container and let's remove it and now you see there's only one container that I actually use right now uh, wh what else we can do uh, in the next videos or somewhere else uh, we can we, we can actually build containers with gigs without using builder uh, container or docker files we can uh, set up gigs services system and home services using uh, OC containers instead of uh, real binaries built by gigs itself in some cases it can be useful for example for software that is hard to package in gigs because of a lot of uh, dependencies that uh, you know N not easy to fetch you can just take OC container uh, generated from docker file or uh, starts somewhere in the docker registry and uh, configure the service that will uh, start your container and will configure all the necessary stuff for it uh, using your basic uh, gigs service capabilities probably there are some other interesting use cases but that's it for today and uh, ask your questions in the comments or uh, reach me via email and I will see you in a bit.